bad news and worse news. He says, oh, what's the bad news? He said, got 24 hours to live. He says, well, what's worse news? I forgot to call you yesterday. The early 2000s were a hell of a time for blue collar comedy, I'll tell you what. As Hollywood was getting more and more haughty and removed from the common man, a few fellas showed up to bring back a warmer, more familiar kind of comedy. Of course, I'm talking about the guys Jeff Foxworthy, Bill Ingvill, Ron White, and yes, of course, the biggest of them all, Larry the Cable Guy. For decades, Larry has been selling out arenas by poking fun at rednecks, hicks, and southern life in general. But he doesn't do it with a cruel, detached tone. Larry celebrates country life as much as he mocks it. There's a reason he has become one of the most beloved comics of his era. But today, we're taking a look at another side of Larry the Cable Guy, otherwise known as Daniel Whitney. Where does Daniel begin and Larry end? How much money does he really make, and what is he up to today? We are diving into what really happened to Larry's TV show, what happened in college that changed his life forever, and the dark truth behind Larry's career. But before we begin, please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps. And subscribe to the channel to show your support for us and for Larry the Cable Guy. Are you ready? Let's get her done and go find out. What happened to Larry the Cable Guy? After rapidly making a name for himself in comedy during the early 2000s, Larry's fame only continued to grow throughout the decade. With some huge comedy specials, big parts in Delta Force and the Cars franchise, and a rollicking barnstorming tour with Bill Ingvill, Ron White, and Jeff Foxworthy. Just a few of the massive success stories during this time. In 2011, when Larry's History Channel travel series Only in America debuted to incredible numbers, it seemed like a logical next step for a brilliant comic who was only expanding his fame and influence. But then something changed and Only in America was cancelled. Larry's stature in the industry seemed to diminish. He still made appearances from time to time, but his star never shined quite as bright as it did during that glorious decade of blue collar comedy. So what happened to pin Larry's wings? Was it just a decrescendo to a successful career? Or was there something darker that happened behind the scenes? Okay, so like I said, Only in America was a hit from the jump, and for good reason. The show, a wide-ranging and eclectic tour of all things Americana, from moonshine to hell's angels. It really was a perfect vehicle for Larry's personality and comedy. His man-of-the-people mentality meant that unlike snooty Hollywood elites, Larry could fit into whatever American setting he found himself in. His comedic talents and sharp observation meant he could make his subjects pretty damn funny. But here's the thing. It's the very eclecticism and intensity of the environments that began to put cracks in Larry's ability to maintain his persona. Some of the problems Larry began facing seemed trivial and in true form, pretty hilarious. Larry has claimed that a big problem he had with the show was the sometimes disgusting situations it put him in. For the episode, Larry's favorite stuff, the guy had to clean porta potties a task he found so disgusting that his motto, get her done, could no longer hold. And there were also some serious pressures behind the scenes. The show required him to keep a rigorous touring schedule, one that kept him away from his family and his young sons, ages 5 and 6 at the time. They were beginning school and passing milestones without their dad present. These are the reasons Larry has cited as to why he left Only in America. And they do hold up to an extent, but they can only go so far in explaining the subsequent course of Larry's career. But stay tuned. Let's take a look at how Larry the Cable Guy came to be. What's the true story behind Larry's voice? Now, it's widely understood that most performers create a character that's a bit different from their real self. But you may be surprised how different the character of Larry the Cable Guy is from the real Daniel Whitney. While we might not be able to fully penetrate the layers of performance and secrecy that he creates, we can investigate his surprising origins. 
Extracting Daniel from Larry is a difficult task. The guy we all know and love as Larry is so ingrained in society that it's hard to imagine there is a different guy inside. And on top of that, Daniel has put lots of work into maintaining the mystique of his character. His official bio once read that he was born in the back of an El Camino during a Fog Hat concert, which is just hysterical. Whether this is really true, it doesn't matter. As long as the jokes keep coming, they are satisfied. But the tangled web of truth goes much deeper than you may expect. The most vital aspect of Larry's character, his trademark backwoods voice, isn't just an exaggeration. It is a complete fabrication. Larry was actually born on a pig farm in Nebraska. He went to high school in Florida. And a pig farm in Nebraska sounds like exactly the place you'd expect Larry the Cable Guy to have grown up. But not so fast. The time Daniel spent with the hogs in Nebraska wasn't the real inspiration for Larry the Cable Guy. Daniel's dad wasn't the kind of hick that Larry's character is. In fact, he was the complete opposite in most respects. Daniel's dad was a pastor, an entertainer, and a guitarist. He instilled in Daniel a love of all things theatrical. So when Daniel went to college, he chose to follow his dad's footsteps. He majored in drama and speech. Now, Daniel went to school in Georgia and he roomed with guys from Texas and Georgia. To tease them, Daniel would often imitate their southern drawls. But to his surprise, instead of kicking his ass, his roommates told him he had a real knack for doing that kind of voice. Daniel now had an idea. He could use his talents for speech and performance, as well as exaggerated images of country life taken from both his childhood and his friends, and create a zany, interesting, hilarious character from it. That's why not long after, when he decided to try his hand at comedy, Daniel found himself continuing the redneck character he'd borrowed from his southern roommates. That's a pretty great story, and it's even crazier when you consider where he would go from there. How much money does Larry make? Larry the Cable Guy's rise to fame is pretty insane, considering how humble his beginnings were. But in entertainment, it's sometimes tough to tell truth from fiction. This is particularly true considering that the character of Larry is a blue-collar, down-home guy. So, how much money does that down-home guy make? And has his recent income been tarnished by his disappearance from mainstream? Considering that Larry at his peak was one of the biggest names in comedy, you'd expect that he's made some decent dough throughout his career. But then again, he hasn't been in the spotlight a ton, and the media doesn't seem as willing to cover him as they once were. That's why I was kinda shocked to hear that Larry's net worth is estimated to be around $100 million. <coughs> oh shit! And he is allegedly still raking in a million bucks a year. So how? The truth is more complicated than you may expect. And while the market has changed and good old redneck humor might not be as mainstream as it was, how has Larry or Daniel adapted to the blowing winds of change? As it turns out, Daniel has found other ways to keep the money rolling in. One of his biggest sources of income is corporate comedy. It turns out you can make a pretty good chunk of change performing at small performances for companies. And Larry has made quite a pretty penny this way, allegedly pulling in over 150 grand a show. In addition to that, he's lent his moniker and moneymaker to countless brands. Larry the Cable Guy Spicy Corn Muffin Mix. Larry the Cable Guy Tuna Dinner. Mmm, yum. Mm. Delicious. It is a bit of a detour from the kind of work that introduced Larry to most of us. But hey, a guy's gotta eat, right? Yeah. Eat this motherfucker. And it better be a spicy corn muffin or some tuna at that. It's always hard to tell exactly what's going on behind the scenes in the entertainment biz. Most important decisions are made in back alleys, and regular Joes like me and you are shut out completely. So it's hard to say what exactly happened to the career of Larry the Cable Guy. We can talk all day about rumors of blacklisting and exile, but at the end of the day, we just don't know. I'm just thankful that Larry, or Daniel if you prefer, 
had a shot in the first place. Because he showed us that the southern way of life isn't something to be ashamed of. It is something you can poke fun at while also embracing it wholeheartedly. So let's hope Larry's career gets a resurgence once more. I'll be there with some popcorn in one hand and a cold beer in the other. Ready to laugh. Ready to have a good time. Because that's the business Larry the Cable Guy is in. All right, that's enough of me. Now I want to hear from you. Have you followed Larry the Cable Guy's career throughout the years? Did you ever see the Blue Collar Comedy Tour live? Who out of those four outstanding comedians is your personal favorite? And what TV special should I watch of Larry the Cable Guy? Get in the comments and tell me your thoughts. And before you hit the door, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and get her done. Come back often so we can keep telling you what happened.